versions of them anyway. So come into your mountain pose. Get the hips nice and open because remember, triangle is nice and open to the front. So hips and shoulders stay facing the front. Feet parallel to each other, straight ahead, knees and hips, knees and ankles, toes all aligned. Shoulders relaxing down. And then get those ribs in and up for support on your spine because we want the spine to be nice and erect for our triangle. And then reach your crown to the ceiling. Deep breaths in, just let that diaphragm move. Your lungs expand fully. And exhale, stress and tension out. So we're gonna inhale, bring the arms to shoulder level. Stretch way out through the fingertips and head. Exhale to your heart. Inhale, stretch to the front and exhale behind you. So bring your fingertips together or your palms together and press your hands toward the floor as you lift your heart. Stretch your whole spine and that upper body back then. And then pivot at your hip joints and come over into your forward bend. Hands coming up toward your head, toward the ceiling. Tuck your chin in, get that back of the neck getting a stretch. Lift your sitting bones, relax as much as you can into that forward pivot. Keep breathing, spread your toes, and again, lengthening your spine as you work your way up. Keep the chin in until the end, and then rotate looking toward the ceiling, lifting your heart. Drop those shoulders, shoulder blades toward your waist always, and stretch your spine. And then inhale back up, release your arms, just feel the circulation getting a little bit more energized. And we'll do it again. So inhale, arms to the side, shoulder level, hands to your heart, keep those elbows a little bit back, stretch to the front with your shoulders down, and then clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. Heart toward the ceiling, stretch your spine, pivot over as you exhale, and relax. So a few breaths, deepening, tuck your chin, relax your neck, lift your sitting bones, get a good stretch through the legs. And again, ribs up, sitting bones down as you wind your way back up. Keep that chin in until you lift your heart and stretch your head back. So as always, no crunching through that back of your neck. Keep chin a little bit toward your chest. And inhale upright, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling how that circulation is doing. And the spine is getting energized. So remember, everything face the front while we do our lateral motion next. Arms out, palms toward the ceiling, and then over your shoulders. Pass your hands across, pull the shoulder blades down, sitting bones down. And keep everything facing the front as you lean to the side. Push the foot you're leaning away from down for that extra rib stretch. And out through the top of your head. Breathe. Relax. And then inhale back up and switch your hands. Again, arms by your ears, shoulders down, sitting bones down. Lengthen as you lean to the other side. And again, just deepen as far into that side stretch. Push the foot down, reach the head away, and get those ribs and obliques lengthening. Inhale back up. And exhale into mountain pose. Take a moment, just feel the sides and your spine. And we'll get ready for our twist. So remember, we want to stretch the spine apart as much as possible so that we have that room to twist. Arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, and over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, pull them back by your ears, sitting bones down, stretch that spine apart for your twist, and exhale either direction. Knees may be a little bent, keep the weight on both feet. Stretch up on the breath in, and when you're ready, exhale and come on over. So deepen into your forward bend as much or as little as feels right for you. Just keep breathing and relaxing. And see if the weight is still on both feet. 
Wrestling. Work your way up, staying in your twist. Look toward the ceiling, but chin in a little bit as you lift your heart and pull your elbows back. So no pressure in that lower back while you're twisted. Just a nice upper body back bend. And then inhale to the top. Exhale to the center. Switch your arms around. And again, pull the shoulders down, sitting bones down. Stretch your spine, breathing in, and exhale into the other twist. And again, weight on both feet evenly, lengthening the spine, breathing, pivoting over as you exhale. And as you get there, just deepen as much or as little as your body needs on this side. Feel your weight shift it around, but see how that's evenly distributing it. And relax. And on an inhalation, come back up. Lift your heart, pull your elbows back, and shoulder blades down. And then again, inhale to the top, exhale to the center. Arms up, pull your shoulders down. Let's swan dive. So arms to shoulder level, palms toward the floor. Lead with your chest and chin. Get your back nice and straight and flat. Stretch those arms out. Make sure you're not up or down, but straight out from your shoulders. And then just drop into ragdoll. Let that whole back get a good stretch. You can do a little more with the arms behind your legs pulling in if you love it. Or you can just stay in that ragdoll and relax. Chin in, lift your sitting bones, get those hamstrings getting a little bit of a stretch. And then again, let's roll back up. And coming into mountain pose, just take a moment, feel your body. So we're gonna start with a basic, I call it the fixed wing aircraft version of triangle. Then we're going to go into a second version, which is a kind of intermediary where we move our feet. And then the third version is the official realized version. So <clears throat> if you want to be in ultimately the realized pose, the length of your inseam is the same distance you want between your ankle bones. So you're just going to separate your feet. And if you use the back of your mat, to align, it helps you to keep your body straight facing the front because you don't want to be twisting your upper body while we're doing triangle. Everything stays in that plane like you're between the window panes or you're aligned so that you aren't touching the wall if you have a wall behind you. So you want to constantly keep that total alignment from the whole back of your body. And then with the feet wherever you want them, just kind of spread out your toes. We're going to keep them facing the front for this version. Hips are open, so sitting bones toward the floor, shoulder blades toward the floor, and your arms come out to shoulder level, and they stay there. So we're going to keep the arms right at palm down, shoulder level through this whole version, and the crown reaches to the ceiling, sitting bones toward the floor, your legs stay straight. And then just tip to the side with your arms straight across from each other. So the goal is not to get your arm to your leg, but to keep the arms reaching away from each other. Just so you look like one of those biplanes that's zooming around. And then it's tipping from one side. You're pivoting back up. And then you're pivoting to the other side, keeping the arms straight across from each other and the body facing forward. And I want you to keep noticing how that straight arm reaching out so you're in your energized star as you come back upright. Shoulder blades are down, sitting bones are down, ribs are in and up, and go ahead and release your arms. That arm position is the same arm position that we're going to use for the next version. So again, the goal is not to get your arm on your leg or the floor when you go into triangle. The goal or the intention is to keep those arms pivoting so that you're actually having that lateral motion, not that you're moving your arms into the position, but they're staying straight at shoulder level. So sink into your feet evenly. Get your whole body nice and open to the front. Bring your arms up to that shoulder level. 
And then we're going to turn one foot 90 degrees, but keep your shoulders and hips forward. So this foot that you've turned, it's going straight to the side. So if you bend your knees, it would be going the same direction as your toes. Your arms are still at shoulder level. And then we're going to keep this back leg also lining up with the knee as you bring your heel back and toes forward, getting that hip area and shoulder area still facing the front. Now we're going to pivot the hands so that the palms face the direction your face is facing. And then keeping your arms straight across from each other, pivot, just like you did before, keeping the arms across from each other. So you may stop here, or you may keep pivoting a little bit more, but again, it's not that you want this hand to go to the leg, you want it to stay straight out. So it doesn't need to go to the floor, and it doesn't need to hit your leg. And then pivot back up. Arms still straight out, turn the palms to the floor, the feet to the front, coming into back into your star, energize it, and go ahead and release those arms. So just feel your body, check to make sure your heels are still even with the back of your mat, and your body still straight facing the front. And of course, we're going to balance and turn the opposite direction with our feet. So again, inhale those arms out, keep them at shoulder level, shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, hips and shoulders open. Turn that other foot 90 degrees, hips and shoulders stay to the front, so don't be turning the direction your foot is going. Lengthen your spine, heel back, toes forward on that foot behind, but again, keep those hips coming to the front. And again, palms facing the way you're facing, and pivot. Keep those arms across from each other and just go a little or maybe a little bit more, but keep this top hip back so that your whole body is straight and don't pull your arms behind you or in front of you, but straight out to the sides. And again, inhale back up, turn your palms toward the floor and your feet to the front. Get your star position and release. So the thing that we didn't do on that one is the thing that's most important if you want to go deeply into triangle. And this is the thing that most people don't do correctly. So find that indentation at the top of your thigh, the hip joint, because we're going to be working with the hip joint in this next version. So what you want to be doing is, as we get into the arm and leg position, you want to be just moving the hips. You don't want to be turning your body, and you don't want to be messing with your legs after they get into the position. You also want to keep the arms right at shoulder level. So body faces forward, and sometimes people find it easier to have the wall right behind you so that you know that you're not leaning some part of your body, usually the hips, away from the wall. So you can choose to stand in front of the wall if you choose. So again, you want to start with your feet facing front and come into your star position. Shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, ribs in and up. And then again, the feet are doing the same thing we did last time. So turn one foot and then heel back, toes forward on your back foot. But notice your body still should be facing forward, your arms still at shoulder level. Now, this is the tricky part. Spread your toes, get really connected into your feet evenly, and then pull your back hip back while you pivot at that front hip and reach, 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 reach straight ahead, still keeping the arms at shoulder level. Then palms toward the front and pivot, keeping again those arms right across from you. The further you push to the side, the further your hand will come down to your leg or the floor. So again, the hips and shoulders face the front, the arms stay right across from each other. Energize out through the fingertips, out through the top of your head. Keep this top hip pulling back so that everything stays lined up with that back of your mat or wall behind you. And then leading with the hand in the air, pivot back up. The arms still should be at shoulder level as you come up. Turn the palms to the floor, the feet to the front, your back in your star position, and release. So notice your body. There's a lot of work through that midsection as you go into 
the triangle, and you're also concentrating on keeping those shoulders nice and open. And we did it to one side, have to do it to the other, and balance things out. So again, make sure that your heels are where they need to be, that everything is even as you're in your position, hips, shoulders forward, and arms at shoulder level. Lengthen through your spine, keep those ribs in, get that core active, turn your feet. 90 degrees with the first one, heel back, toes forward. That knee should be bending the direction of your toes on your back leg. And again, hip joint is your focal point. This hip comes back while you pivot at that hip joint and reach, reach, reach with those arms still across from each other. Everything still facing forward. Palms to the direction you're facing and pivot. And again, you don't have to get to the floor. You can stay here. This is a perfectly good triangle. If you want to be there, fine. Kind of draw up through your legs so you're fully supported by both legs, even though you're leaning toward one side. And if you want to keep pivoting, you can pivot as far as you want. Keep this top shoulder back. Keep this top hip back so that your arms stay across from each other, your body still facing the front as much as you can. Breathe. Keep pulling that top hip back. Keep reaching out through your head and your hands. Maximize or minimize. It's your triangle. Remember, personal practice. And then leading with that hand in the air, pivoting back up. Turn your feet forward and the palms toward the floor. Get your star position. Feel it. And release. And breathe. So, kind of notice how the circulation is through your hips, through your midsection, through your shoulders, through your whole body. Now, if you found that that was a good level for you to be at, stay there. We're going to do something just a little different this time, a little bit more shoulder opening. So as you come into the triangle, we're going to do exactly the same thing, including that hip motion, positioning our feet, keeping arms at shoulder level, working those hips, pivoting into the initial triangle. And then we're going to do something a little different. So again, position yourself, find your hips and shoulders, make sure they're open. Arms at shoulder level. Keep those shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, everything aligned to the front. Move your feet. First foot turns 90 degrees, but keep those hips still forward. And heel back, toes forward on your back foot. The upper body doesn't move. Push, push, push for your pivot. Palms to the front. And again, pivoting, bringing that hand down towards your leg. The other one straight above your shoulder. So the hip is back, the shoulder is back, and your whole body is facing the front. So make sure that you're not pulling the arm back yet or you're not leaning it forward or over your hip. Everything straight across. So if you have a block and you're not reaching the floor or your leg, you can use the block for support also. You can stay here. Or we're going to open the shoulder a little bit more with this version. So look up towards your hand, kind of a rotation through that whole upper body. And then if you like that, you can stay there. Or you can bring the arm behind you. Or you can bend your elbow and actually reach for your lower hip and allow that whole twist through your spine to kind of maximize a little bit more. So your head is still reaching to the side. The hips and shoulders are still facing the front, although this top shoulder is opening a little bit more into a back bend. Keep reaching around if you want to, or allow the back arm to be palm up towards the ceiling behind you. And then if you're holding the hip, bring it back to the back, palm up, bring the arm back over your shoulder, and again, use that hand to pivot back up. Palms to the floor, feet to the front, and release. So if you did that shoulder opening, you're going to feel that one shoulder a little bit more energized. Kind of notice that. Notice how your body responds and reacts. So find your position so that we can balance and do the other side. So again, depending on your body, you may find one shoulder wants more work than the other. That's okay. But if possible, try to 
allow your body to do similar things on both sides. So again, positioning, hips to the front, shoulders to the front, arms to shoulder level. Position your feet, turning 190 degrees and the other to that halfway position, knees aligned with the toe. And again, push, push, push to the side, arms straight across, body facing the front. Palms to the front, pivot into your triangle. You can be wherever your triangle wants to be. So even if you're here, you can still do the shoulder opening. It's your body, your choice. So again, keeping the top hip back, the shoulder back, so that everything stays lined up through your arms, through your shoulders. Reach that head way to the side, and then if you want to, rotate your whole torso to look slightly up. Pull that arm a little bit behind you, or bend the elbow and bring it to the hip, your hand to the hip. And again, pull that top shoulder back a little bit more if you're in that shoulder opening, and keep reaching the head to the side as you look slightly up toward the ceiling. So your whole body's in the twist, hips, ribs, shoulder, and head looking toward the side and slightly up. So maximize or minimize, remember, personal practice, just do what's right for your body, your shoulder. If you've got that hand down, bring it back, turn it palm up, bring it toward the ceiling, get things aligned, and when you're ready, pivot up and into star, arms out, feet to the front, and release. Take a moment there, feel your body. You can go back into mountain pose if you feel like you need a little bit of a release through your legs and hips. We're gonna do one more. It's a little bit even more complicated. So, personal practice. Remember, you can do any of the previous versions if you wanna stick with those. So again, find your position. Breathe deep, exhale tension. Find your feet, make sure they're evenly planted. Your back is straight to the back of your mat or the wall. Arms to the shoulder level, feet positioning. So foot to the side, heel back, toes forward, body open to the front. And again, push, push, push to the side. Palms to the front, pivot into your triangle. And only go as deep again as feels right for you. Now this time we're gonna do something again a little different. If you wanna stay in your triangle or you wanna go into the shoulder opener, feel free. Or we're gonna go into the revolved triangle. It's a little bit more complicated. So kneecaps toward your thighs, get well positioned into both your legs. And then rotate your body with your arms still right across from each other to face that front foot. So your whole body is parallel to the floor and sitting bones back, crown forward, fingertips out. Stay here if that's enough or rotate again your whole upper body coming arms as much across from each other as you can with the hand coming down toward the floor. And again, it doesn't have to reach there if your twist doesn't get you there. So twisting, twisting, twisting to look behind you. The palm is looking the direct, facing the direction you're looking and your body is entirely rotating in that twist except through the legs. And then pivoting back to parallel to the floor with those arms straight out. Pivot back up, rotate to the center. Your arms still should be shoulder level. Feet to the front, palms to the floor in your star, and release. So twists, remember, do more energy along the spine, so you may feel a little bit more stimulated in that area. Again, you can go back in the mountain pose for a moment if your legs need a break, but you know what we're doing next. Opposite side, yeah. Hips to the front, shoulders to the front, feet situated evenly. Get your body aligned. Breathe deep. And arms out. Feet positioning. Push, push, push. Palms to the front. 
come into your triangle. And again, only as deep as you want. You can be partially down. It doesn't matter. Just keep those arms across from each other. And again, keep the hip back, the shoulder back, the arms across from each other, wherever you are, reach out through the top of your head. If you want to go into the revolved triangle, pivot so that you're facing the floor, the arm coming out, everything straight, parallel, and reaching out. Stay here. That's a good position to be in. Or rotate your whole body, again, twisting so that spine is long, as you bring the one hand down and the other one right across from it into the revolved triangle. You're looking toward whatever's behind you, and so is your palm. And your knees are coming up so that you're not overstraining the back of your leg. Take a breath. Stretch it out. And then pivoting. Again, parallel to the floor, hands are reaching out. You can pivot up. Turn pivoting to the front. Palms to the floor, feet forward, and release from your star back into mountain pose. Take a moment, lots of energy, lots of work we did this morning. So breathe. And then hands together, look at them. Inhale up. You can bring those thumbs back and get a nice stretch and Upper body back bend if you want. Exhale, pivot on over and all the way into child's pose on the floor. So hips back on your heels, palms up, forehead down, and relax. So lots of hip opening. So here we're releasing into that forward bend, releasing the hips. Lots of shoulder opening as well. So just let the shoulders sag down a little bit. Breathe deep and exhale tension. And then sitting up, you can bring your legs to the end of the mat and it's time for relaxation. So, staff position, sitting bones down, shoulders right above, hips, ankles, knees, everything lined up in the front of your body. And again, core working, just roll your body back all the way to the mat in corpse position. Take a few moments there, just relaxing. So as always, scan through your body, kind of move back and forth along that lower back sacrum area to get things positioned comfortably. The hips were working pretty hard this morning, so let the belly move, let that whole pelvic area relax. Shoulders also, shoulder, shoulder blades down toward the mat, hands, palms up to release any tension that might have crept through your shoulders. And just knees up toward the ceiling and just allow your lower legs and body to relax. Deep breaths in, soften your face and your jaw and exhale deeper into that earthbound connection. So with each breath, just let your body relax a little more, grow a little heavier, deepen a little more into that Mother Earth embrace. And just let the Earth support you as it always does. Let your body go, just sink into the embrace and relax. Let your breath deepen. Let your body soften and just let your mind begin to drift. No need to think of your body, just let it relax. And as other thoughts come to your mind, just let them go as well, floating away like a cloud, disappearing beyond the horizon. Content of your thoughts just dispersing like the wind. Now, as you breathe more deeply and let your mind drift, just allow your breath to deepen, your body to relax, and your thoughts to disappear. As new thoughts come, just let them go as well. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. Just let the breath 
and the body release and relax your thoughts drifting away beyond the horizon out of sight out of mind and just allow your awareness to turn inward at that peace within fill your mind Feel your body. Just be peace. And as always, feel free to stay in your relaxing position as long as you'd like. We worked hard today. You might want a little longer relaxation. Feel free. Or if it's time for you to draw your energy and awareness back to the moment to your body, just breathe more deeply. Begin moving your body gently as you become ready. Give yourself a good stretch or just Release and relax a little bit more. If you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, push your back down a little bit. Draw your heels in and your knees toward your heart. Give yourself that appreciative yoga hug whenever you're done. Release that. And your feet to the mat. Roll to the side. And sit back up, getting ready for what is ever's ahead. For you today. Thanks for joining me this morning.